younger, so that's not that. <laughs> All right, all right. So, how far did we get in chapter seven last time? The list price, retail price, trade discounts. We start talking about that. So we didn't, we didn't really do an example. We basically just got the sort of the, the classic example that uh, terminology. Yeah, that net price equals list price minus trade uh, discount. Trade discount amount, right? Right. And then I, we we got to how much how you calculate the trade discount amount, right? Yeah. We had, mm -hmm. we actually had a formula, right? Yeah. yeah. So I said uh, trade discount amount is trade discount rate times the list price, right? And note, folks, that when you are in negotiations with your wholesaler as a retailer, this is the only thing that you negotiate, okay? Literally. You don't negotiate what the costs are. You don't negotiate what the prices you sell stuff at. That's all determined by the, 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 re for the wholesaler or the manufacturer, whoever it is. They tell you, you're going to sell this car for $25,000. And you say, okay, I will set the price at $25,000. And most of the times, those manufacturers, they've got a pretty tight stranglehold on you, right? If you actually try and sell that car for less money, they can actually sue you for doing it. Because the contract states that you will not sell it for a certain amount less than whatever price they tell you it, it has to be sold at. And that's so that you don't sell too many, because then they don't have to produce too many, right? Again, it's all about supply control and demand control. So that they can make the most profit possible. But don't they say a lot of times suggested? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, suggested retail price is basically the uh, manufacturer's way of saying, if you can sell it for this much, go ahead and make as much profit as you can. But if someone comes in and says, well, I'd really like to pay $1,000 less, there is a low ball. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a point. Oh, no. Yeah, definitely there is a point yeah. where the, the retailer cannot sell it for less than that, period. No matter how much you negotiate, even though they're still making money on the deal, they'll have to say no. And that's because their contract tells them so. All right? So, oh, yeah, all right. All right, now, did I do the substitution? I didn't make it to the substitution. Okay. So the substitution, folks, is basically to say, oh, here's the trade discount amount in this problem, right? Here's the definition of the trade discount amount. Let's put this right up there. Just substitute it in, right? So that what's the net price equation becomes? I'm just going to throw algebra in here, aren't you? <laughs> I will always be throwing algebra in here, Greg. Algebra is one of the foundations of mathematics, folks. It will always come back, okay? And I suppose I should be explicit here in the beginning, right? So it's net price equals the list price. Minus, and now put this new mini formula in for that particular parameter trade discount rate times the list price. And the key is what does this formula look like? New equals old minus rate times old. What does this represent from chapter six? Yes, exactly. And so essentially what we are going to focus on in chapter seven, folks, is percent decreases. That's the goal, okay? Now, we're gonna get deep down the rabbit hole in this one a little bit, but basically all we're gonna be doing is variations on the theme of percent discount. All right? So, let's just do an example to start with, with this basic stuff, and see how it goes, okay? So, let's suppose that I say, um, all right, so, what kind of a retail shop should we run, folks? Cats. Hmm? Cats. Cats? Okay. So, I am running a retail cat store. All right, now, how good of a negotiator am I, folks? 
Marginal? Okay, marginal to decent. Okay, so I negotiate a, let's say, 18% um, trade discount. Okay? That's my trade discount rate. Right? I order, uh, let's say I order 100 hats at a uh, suggested, but let me just, let me abbreviate it so that it's easier to write. At an MSRP, you guys remember what MSRP stands for? Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. Basically they're telling me this is the price I have to sell my hats at. What price should I sell my hats at? 20 bucks? 25 bucks? Are these really nice hats? Are we selling like $40 hats? Are we selling, we're selling a cowboy hat, not like a baseball hat? $40. Okay, an MSRP of $40. Okay, and what I want you to do is for the invoice for my company, okay, I am the retail seller, okay, but this is my order to my manufacturer. What I want to know is what is the invoice from my manufacturer coming to me tell me I need to pay to pay for these hats, okay? So in other words, Tell, tell me what is the list price what is the trade discount amount and what is the net price so these are three standard pieces of information that you should always be able to tell about any order that a retailer is making to their manufacturer, okay? Essentially, think of this as being an invoice, okay? And we, as the, as the retailers, have to pay it to our manufacturer. So, hmm? before we start, let me impress upon you that this is an invoice. So when we start talking about list price and net price, I'm talking about the entire order, not one item, okay? So, what is the list price for this particular portion? How much stuff am I, how many dollars worth of stuff am I getting? A thousand, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 40 times 100. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, one more zero. All right, so. $40 per hat, 100 hats, $4,000. Now again, folks, what does this represent to my business? What does this $4,000 represent? Not quite, not there yet, you're on the right track. It's not profit, but what is it? No, other side. Income, this is revenue, folks. This is what we are going to sell those 100 hats for. We're going to sell each hat for 40 bucks because that's the MSRP. They told us you need to put them out on the rack and say they're worth 40 bucks. Okay? Now, somebody can come in with a 5% discount coupon or something, and we can deal with all of that crap. But in, a, in the end, we're selling each one of these hats for $40. Now, what's my trade discount amount? 18%. 18%. So, how do I calculate 18% of 4000 There you go. Point one eight times four thousand. Somebody crank that out for me, please. Seven twenty or something. Seven twenty. Now, what number does that represent? Great. <laughs> this is going to be our profit. Okay, the trade discount amount, the percent that you're negotiating as a percentage. This is the profit from the sale. Okay. This is why this number, this trade discount rate, is the most important number that you work with as a retailer, right? We don't set the $4,000 amount, not at all. All we do is negotiate for this discount, that's it, right? So last but not least, what's the net price? Yeah, 
And what does that number represent? You might be right, but... What do you have to pay? This is what we have to pay the manufacturer in order to get the actual 100 hats, okay? So this represents revenue, right? It's what we're going to have when we sell the hats. This is profit, which will be the difference between how much we spend and how much we make. And the list price, or the net price, is always our cost. It's what we had to actually pay to get the hats, all right? So that's how this stuff works in a retail shop business. Now, this is very, very simpli simplified form, folks. All right? Very, very simplified. I'm going to make it more complicated because that's the way business is. But for the most part, this is how it works. All right? And if you are a bare bones retail business shop, that th this could be what you work on. Right? And if your product is good, so if your hats are amazing, Manufacturers making good hats, and everybody who comes to you says, wow, these are great hats. I want to buy 10 of them so I can give them out as presents to all my family. You're like, sweet, I will sell you 10 of them. No problemo, right? And again, how much work are you doing to get that $40 hat sold? As a retailer, folks, you really do very little in retail work. That's the job of the manufacturer, right? They're the ones who get the commercials out and say, buy a Buick. Everybody loves a Buick. They're comfortable. You can always get in and out of them just takes you a long time. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not old enough to drive a Buick. Neither are you, Ray. No. The okay. average age of a Buick driver is 82. Exactly. <laughs> That's a joke. It, it's it's a good say joke. it. Yeah. It's a good joke, right? I've heard That's a Buick. What, whenever I go visit my in-laws in Iowa, there's Buicks all over the place, mm -hmm. and the guys that are driving them, you're just like, how does he see? <laughs> 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 all right, so anyway, sorry. List price, trade discount, about net price. Pretty straightforward? Yeah? Okay, so, uh, let's see. So when I ordered these hats, folks, and I went to, you know, I wanted to sell them, what had to happen before I could start selling the hats? Well, we did the negotiation, right? I did the 18% negotiation. I'm getting that all set up. But in order for me to sell the hats, what has to happen to the hats? Is the manufacturer's business right next door? They gotta drive those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shipping. Shipping. It is an issue, folks. We gotta pay for it. Somebody has to pay for it, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to be us. Could be somebody else instead. Alright? First rule of shipping, folks. There is no trade discount on shipping. Please make sure that the shipping is removed from any of your charges when you go to figure out what your trade discount amount is, okay? You do not get a discount on shipping. Technically, when you have a manufacturer-retailer relationship, you must use a third-party company to do the shipping. You cannot use either of your own shipping companies in order to do it. It's actually still against the law if you do it. Now. The law has gotten a lot more relaxed in the last five years so that the company who's doing the shipping could be a subsidiary of one of the other two companies that's either the manufacturer or the, re or the retailer, but they at least have to be a separate business entity, okay? So that their tax ID has to be different. When it comes to filing tax forms, they have to be filing under a different business entity. And even that's starting to get fuzzier as we get more and more close to sort of an open, laissez-faire approach to shipping and business and <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll go through here in a bit. Anyways, though, so, um, <coughs> when, when you're dealing with shipping, obviously somebody has to pay for it. So the key here is that there are two types of shipping, right? And the two types are just simply a matter of who's going to pay. First type is FOB shipping point. Leave yourself a little space so that we can describe. And type two is FOB destination. Okay. I didn't print very well. Destination. 
And I guess I could just say destination point, whatever, just so that it's consistent. So, first off, what does FOB stand for? And it's not FOB, like the thing that you have to have in order to get in. What was that? It's right on board, nicely done. All right, so FOB is right on board. And the reason that they used the word freight is because this is a term that came around mostly when we were dealing with shipping as a need with ships, right? Literally boats, right? I mean, this sort of concept of, of paying with retailer and wholesaler has been around since literally the 1700s when this country first got going. I mean, scary thing is that the slave trade was actually doing this kind of business setup when they were creating it. I mean, there was literally shipping points and determinations of who paid shipping and the slave trade. It's scary. You can actually look up the invoices. It's a little on the morbid side, but it's actually valid and it's still out there. You can look it up. All right? Um, it was, uh, do you guys know that there was a, there was a, a new museum that they opened up in Washington, D.C. that's, you know, the, it's the Black History Museum. It's awesome. My wife got to go last time she went. She's like, oh, you really need to go. The last time that we went, they didn't, they didn't have any tickets for us. They were time tickets. And if you didn't get a ticket on time, we were like, tough luck. And we went like a week beforehand to buy tickets. They're like, oh, yeah, we're sold out for three months. I was like, uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> so we left. But my wife got in last time. So she said it was a great seat, too. So awesome. They, they, had, they had an invoice from one of those ships. Anyways. All right, so stands for freight on board. To determine which of these, which one, which company has to pay, what I, what I tend to tell students is think of the F as free instead of freight. If it's free on board when it's shipped, who pays for the shipping? Yeah, the buyer, right? Buyer pays shipping. Because if, if it's free when it's shipped, then the person who bought it, who's getting it shipped to them, pays. pays, right? If it's free on board where it goes to, then who paid? The manufacturer or the seller pays shipping. Again, remember, in this instance, we are the retailer buying from the manufacturer. So if it's FOB shipping, we have to pay the shipping. If it's FOB destination, then our manufacturers pay the shipping. And again, this is this sort of a relationship in your in your billing. You negotiate. It's also part of the trade discount amount, right? So one of the things that you may say is, well, I'll take an 18% trade discount only if you are willing to always pay the shipping charges. Right? And they may say, well, no, 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 we want you to cover the shipping charges. And you say, well, that's fine. Then I demand a 22% trade discount amount, right? And this is the whole haggle back and forth crap that goes along with business, right? And of course, the way business is run in the last five or ten years, this would be done in a, you know, a strip club with you know, two old white men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, this business hasn't changed as much as we wish it has. But it really hasn't. <laughs> Not said. Anyways, all right. So, do realize that they're shipping. So you need to be careful. If the shipping is included in the list price, you need to take it. Okay, so here's an example. Um, so I ordered um, whatever. I ordered. Let's stick with the hat company thing, right? Let's suppose I ordered uh, three thousand dollars of hats. This includes. A uh, two hundred dollar shipping charge. So I have to pay the shipping, and for whatever reason, the invoice came in saying that that's part of the list price. Okay. Let's suppose I still get the eighteen percent trade discount. That's the oh, I swear. And so 
find me the standard three pieces of information that I care about. So tell me what's the list price, what's the trade discount amount, and then tell me what's the net price that I'm going to have to pay to get this $3,000 worth of hats. Again, whatever the hats are. Maybe these are $100 hats, so there's only a, a, a certain number of them, but whatever. <clears throat> I'm just sort of jumping past the, this is the number of items in dollar amount. All right, so this is a slightly tricky question because what is the list price? Technically, the list price represents the dollar, item, dollar amount of the items that I am getting. You could say that it's $3,000. What else could you potentially say? You could say $2,800 goes down because it's included in that $3,000. Okay? Why is $2,800? Hundred equally is okay as three thousand. You're taking out the two hundred dollars shipping and saying it's really not a part of the list price. It's actually okay to report it either way in the business world right now. Okay, the rules of the business world say that if in this situation you can write it up either way. You can say it's three thousand, or you can say it's twenty eight hundred. You just have to make sure that the end product winds up being the correct dollar amount. Okay. All right, so when I go to do the trade discount amount, remember, my trade discount amount is never given on shipping. Uh-huh. So when you go to calculate the trade discount amount, you only get to use $2,800 worth of product, not the $200 worth of shipping. So wouldn't it be better to write $2,800 in the list prep spot just to not mess yourself up? Perfectly okay with me. If you wrote $2,800 up inside of there, I would be perfectly okay with it, right? You just have to remember then, in the end, when you go to the net price, to add the $200 back. Either way, all right? So for me, I am okay with you putting either number up in the list price. I would, I would not mark you wrong if you put either number up there, okay? Mostly, though, what I'm grading is going to be net price, okay? So what did I say I was getting? 18%? So how much of a discount did I get? Somebody crank that out for me. Let's see up the number. 504. So what is going to be my line? What is going to be my net price? How much do I actually have to pay to get all of these three thousand dollars worth of hats? In theory, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh huh. Three thousand minus five hundred four, or you can do the twenty eight hundred minus five hundred four and then add the $200 of shipping. Either way around it, okay? So what is that, $2,496? Or $2,800 minus $504 plus $200 of shipping, and note that will get you back to the same. <coughs> All right? So in the end, it doesn't matter how you get to that number. You just have to make sure that you do get there based on the fact that no trade discount on shipping. Okay. And again, it won't surprise me if in the next year or two that's also sort of gone by the wayside and shipping becomes this amalgamation of who knows what going on. So the, the key behind this, folks, is realize the reason why it's a little bit scary that shipping may or may not be inside of this is that the tax rates for goods are different than the tax rate for shipping. Tax rates for shipping are standard straight sales tax, whereas Selling a product that you have made is often a value-added tax, and it's usually a higher percent tax rate. So what might a business do if they wanted to pay less in taxes when they were selling a whole bunch of hats? Instead of saying the hats were worth $2,800 and the shipping was $200, they could say, oh, the hats were really worth $2,000, and the shipping was $1,000, and now they're only paying the high tax rate on a smaller number. Technically, that's against the rules, and a business would never break the rules, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They wouldn't, would they? Because they'd get in trouble, maybe, right? You did say maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, uh-huh. You see my point, and this is why 
This is why shipping charges don't have a trade discount amount, folks, and why technically they're supposed to be a third-party business, so that that kind of hiding of, of money is not able to be done. But with the deregulation of the of, of the business world, it's it's becoming less standard. Okay. So, anyways, just be a little bit <coughs> careful with shipping. Note that the book is really, really, really shipping happy. Shipping happy. Okay. It likes to put shipping in every problem, and it hides it sometimes in the list price. Sometimes it says it's extra on the side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just be careful with shipping on the homework. I will let you know that I am not as much of a shipping Nazi as the book. So on the test, if I have shipping options in there, they will be very clear and very concise and obvious what it is. The book will try to kind of trick you. Okay, so please read carefully when it comes to shipping in the homework. All right. All right, so do you think you only get one trade discount rate when you're buying stuff from a, you know, from a vendor of some sort? Yes, uh -huh. So question, can we get additional discounts? And the answer is, of course, yes. It's the same as if you go to Kohl's, right? I mean, when you go to Kohl's, you go with the 30% off coupon that you got in the mail, right? And where's the first place you go when you, when you go into Kohl's? You, you walk over to the 70% off rack, right? Because if you've got a 30% coupon and the rack is 70% off, no, it doesn't work like that. 30% plus 70%, what is that, folks? 100%. It's 100%. So the rack is free, right? No. Don't you just pick it up and carry it out? The, that's, not, that's not how it works. You can only use one coupon. But it's a 70% off rack. It's you not can't a coupon. use coupons on that rack. Yeah, you can. No, not at Kohl's, you can't. <laughs> but, but sometimes they like you, though. Not very often. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that it's not 30% off and 70% off together. It's a chained discount. All additional discounts are chained. What does that mean, folks? Yes, exactly. They're not additive. If you get a 30% discount and a 70% discount, you cannot add them and say it's a 100% discount. Right? The chain means that if you get 70% off, after you take the 70% off, then you apply the 30% discount. And if you get another one, you apply it after that one. So that's what chained discounts means. They happen one after the other. All right? So how would we get more discounts from our supplier? You hinted at it, Andy, Miranda, a little bit, right? More items. Yeah, bulk purchasing. So maybe our hat manufacturer says, hey, if you guys buy more than 200 hats, we'll give you an extra 5% chain discount. When are most sales made in this country, folks? Christmas. Christmas, exactly. Do you think the hat manufacturer only makes his hats right before Christmas? No, he probably makes them year round. So what does he have to do with the hats that he makes in like January, February, March? Yeah, he has to store them, or he needs to try and convince you to buy in January, February, March. How do they give you a... Yes. Exactly, right? So, seasonal discounts. So if you say you're going to buy 200 hats and you're going to buy them in March, you may get an additional 3% chain discount on top of it, right? Because now it's your job to store them until it comes to Christmas, and you have to pay for all of that crap as opposed to them, right? Any other reasons why they might get a discount? There's an infinite number of they them. Have, like, overstock? Yeah, might be something along those lines, right? So stocking, stock clearance. So maybe they're switching lines and they're trying to get rid of a specific hat line. And so they're like, look, if you'll just buy the rest of these, we'll throw another 2% at you, right? Something along those lines, right? Um, this is one of my favorites. It's technically against the law, though. So write it down. <laughs> write it down. So it could be that um, 
your manufacturer who is making the hats. He's got a brother who has a shipping business, and he, you know, he's trying to keep his brother in business. And so what he what he says to you is that, hey, you know, I'm we did negotiate that you're going to pay for the shipping, but if you use my brother's shipping company, I will always give you an extra two and a half percent discount. Technically, folks, that's against the law. Why? Because it's showing favoritism to a specific shipping company, which should be a third-party entity. Yeah, like, like nobody does that. But, I, but it's technically against the law. But you just said that you could technically use people that, like you're seeing business, but just a different business. Exactly. So what's the yeah, I, I agree. But it, it's one of those things that if it were caught by the by the SEC, you would get in trouble. So they, don't, area. they don't really look, right? I mean, no one looked at it, but that definitely happens, right? It, it's, it's favoritism, it's nepotism to some degree, right? But that, that's been the basis for almost all of business since the 1600s, so it's not going to go away. But, yeah, it, it's definitely something you could get, right? Again, and this is the sort of thing you get when you negotiate, right? At the negotiation table, they'll say, well, shipping, yeah, you're going to pay for it. And, and then they'll slide this little piece of paper over saying, brother, shipping company, 2% discount, right? I mean, hush, possible. Right? Again, does it really happen? No. It so never really happened. How put that in the invoice? Sneakily. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest, because I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, anyways, here's how it looks when you get those discounts. So, chain discounts, chain discounts <laughs> look like this. It looks like I'm writing a fraction. What I'm really writing is the list of all of the different discounts that I'm getting on this particular order. So this is basically telling me that I'm getting a 20% discount, then a 5% discount, and then a 4% discount. Okay. So each one of these represents a new discount, depending on whether or not you bought enough product, or you bought it at the right time, or you used the right shipping company, what have you. Okay. And this is how they hide it, right? Because they don't have to explain where these numbers come from, they just have to write the numbers down. Okay? So, let's do a chain discount problem. All right? What? So, so I buy, let's see, we're gonna we're gonna get the bulk discount. So this time we're gonna buy 250. Are we still selling $40 hats? Okay, I buy $250, $40 hats. It's March, so we are getting a, an 18.54 discount. And folks, it literally looks like that on the invoice. That's how they will actually type it up. So if you ever see this on an invoice, you'll be like, ah, okay, I know what that means. So tell me what is the list price, trade discount amount, and the net price. All right, so list price first, folks. Note I didn't put shipping in here because I hate dealing with shipping. Mm -hmm. 40 times 250? So we're buying $10,000 worth of hats, folks. Now, how do we do the discounting? So what am I going to do first, right? 18% up to $10,000. So I'm going to take $10,000 .18. times 0.18. $1,800. What do I do with that 1800? And times 5.05. Wait. 18, yeah, times 0. 0.18. Then you subtract, right? Because right. it's a discount, right? So you take it off 8200, and now you get a 5% discount. So this is what the chain means, is that it doesn't go back to the 10,000, it always goes to the new number. So the next discount is off of a smaller number and it's not worth as much. That's why they chain them, folks. So that it doesn't wind up zero, right? Because 70% and 30% would then be 100%, right? 
So what is 8200 times 0.05? 10. Subtract it from the 4 to 8200. What are we down to now? 77 something. What do I do with the 7790? Times 0.04. <sighs> <laughs> What was that? 311.60. 311.60, I'll buy it. Sounds about right. All right? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah? Okay, so one more time. Phew, man. I sure hope there's a shortcut. Yeah, it probably is, huh? <laughs> Got to do it the long way once. <clears throat> All right, so what do, we, what do we finally get down to? Uh, 73, oh, 74. 747,000. And what does that number represent? Trade discount price. Net price. Net price, right? That's actually what we're going to pay for the $10,000 worth of hats, right? So this is $7,478.40. And theoretically, what's my trade discount amount? Oh, that would be minus that, right? Yeah. Just take the difference. Or if you want, you can add up your three discounts. Either way, perfectly okay. But a good quick subtraction, 2,521 2, and 60 cents, right? That's a five, I swear. All right, so. Ugh. So, shortcut, folks. If you're getting an 18% discount, what percent of the product are you paying for? Eighty-two. What's ten thousand times point eight two? Did that in one step instead of two. If you're getting a 5% discount, folks, what percent are you actually paying for? 95%. Guess what 8200 times 0.95 is? I bet it's 77.90. Hey. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your next two steps in one step. Guess what I'm going to do last? 96. 96. And what am I going to do to get my final number? 7790 times 0.96 gives me 74.78. That's how you should really do discounts, folks. Especially if you've got four or five of those running along all at the same time. Having to multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract is ridiculous. What is a normal chain? How many? Three? Four? Three is normal. Okay. You, I've seen some as high as seven. Okay. Again, it was weird. And a lot of the chains were like really just small numbers, like 0.1%. And each one of them means something as far as what you're dealing with, right? Exactly. Right. We're in the negotiation. Whether it's this yep. or whatever. Yep. Uh -huh. Time, whether it's number of that you purchased, whether it's, you know, you're shipping longer than you know 400 miles, or if you, you bought know. so much, you get this. Uh huh. Got yeah. It. Okay. And and it's all incentivized, right? Purchasing and shipping is now all an incentivized game to some degree. And this is what you have to get into when you do the negotiation of your wholesaler retailer 
relationship, right? Is, is what <laughs> ways can you make more profit? Because every one of these things that you tack on here, folks, that is straight profit to you. So if you can negotiate another 0.2%, you do it, period. Because that's just money, that's all it is. It's like just putting money in your back pocket, boom, right? So anyways, the cool part about it, folks, is that these complements, they have a special name. It's called the net price equivalent rate. So the net price equivalent rate of any chain discount is just a product of all of the chain discounts complements, right? So 0.82 times 0.95 times 0.96 is this invoice's net price equivalent rate. So somebody got their calculator really quick and punch that product off for me. Should be something like 0.74784, right? I didn't do it in my head, but I used the fact that I knew what the answer was to get this, right? And the key to this, folks, is note, what is $10,000 times 0.74784? What's the net price? Seven four seven eight point four zero. This is how you should be finding the net price, folks. Is calculating what the net price equivalent rate is, and then just multiply that number by your list price or your starting price. Okay, that's how you get to the net price quickly. Note, there's a couple of homework problems that ask for this. The book abbreviates it with this NPER abbreviation because it got lazy and they want to write the whole words out, which I can understand. But when you see that abbreviation, folks, this is what they're looking for. All right. Now, so here's a star. Here's another star. Another term you need to know: single. Equivalent discount rate. Again, the book will abbreviate it with SEDR. Basically, this is asking you how do you write that chain discount, 18 slash 5 slash 4, as one number. Right? So the chain discount is really three discounts, but I want to know what the discount is as just one number. This is that number. And the cool thing about it is that this is just 1 minus the net price equivalent rate. It's the complement of the net price equivalent. So the number that gets you the net price, its complement will be the number that gives you the trade discount amount, which should make sense to some degree, right? So for our example, 1 minus 0.74784 will give us our net price equivalent of 0.25216. And so that discount of 18 slash 5 slash 4 is really equal to a 25.216% discount as one percentage, right? In other words, you cannot just add the discounts up. You can't do 18 plus 5 plus 4 and tell me it's a 27% discount. That just, that's right out, okay? Mm -hmm. You gotta go through these two things in order to figure out one, the net price equivalent rate, and then the single equivalent discount rate for an entire chain discount, all right? All right, so let's try another one with all of this sort of built in, okay? So, um, let's move on away from hats. Let's see. Uh, so let's suppose I order 
Well, let's make it simple, right? Let's say I order $5,000 of stuff. Whatever it is, right? Switch to your favorite retail business and it's the stuff you're selling in your retail business, all right? I get a, let's make it, let's suppose I did a little bit better negotiation. Let's suppose I got a uh, 22 slash 6 slash 2 discount. Now, note, folks, I can now ask you five things in this problem now, okay? Two more than the original three. I'm still going to ask you what's the list price. But now I can also ask you what is the net price equivalent rate. Okay? So that, that piece of information is a question that I could ask on any test or any homework. Okay? The homework will ask you three or four times. There's definitely a question on the test that asks for the same thing. All right? And the whole point of calculating the net price equivalent rate is to make it easier to calculate the net price. So just use it to get the net price. And then I can also ask for the single equivalent discount rate and the trade discount amount. So the standard three that I talked about before, list price, net price, and trade discount amount, but then the two rates in between, okay? All right, so what's my list price, folks? 5000 If I ask you an easy question, please don't piss away the points, okay? I did that on one test, and when, you know, 10% of the people screwed up the first part of this question. I was like, really? Then I felt bad, because I meant it to be easy, and, and then people were missing it, I was like, uh. So anyways, um, on the test, I will always force you to calculate what the list price is, because apparently that makes more sense, so that's the way I'll do it, just so feel safe. All right, so now, how are we going to find this net price equivalent rate? What do we do? Advice from the wise, folks. As soon as you see this chain discount, write its complements above it. Just do it, okay? You never actually use the numbers 22, 6, and 2 ever in the entire problem. You really shouldn't ever use any of them. If you use one of them, you screwed up, okay? Other than to calculate what their complements are, okay? So what's the complement of 22? 78. What's the complement of 6? 94, and what's the complement of 2? 98. 98. Awesome. Alright? So what am I going to do to find the net price equivalent rate? Multiply them all. Multiply them all together as decimals. Make sure you multiply them as decimals. Round to what? Do not round anything on the rates, folks. Do not round anything here. Leave all of the numbers. Only round when you get to money. Alright? These are rates. No money, don't round. So what do we get? 1718536. Okay, i that. Now, how am I going to find the net price? Multiply 5,000 times the NPER. Uh-huh, exactly. That's the whole point, right? This is what this is why you calculate the net price equivalent rate. Because now to get the net price, you just multiply those two numbers. That's, that's all there is to it, right? So it's literally 5,000 times 0.718536. And now this number represents money. This number you round to the nearest penny. Okay? When you get to money, round where needed. Okay? So, what am I paying? $3,598.68. $3,598.68. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, $3,598. Yeah. Thirty-five ninety-two sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I missed one of those numbers because I was writing in the stupid sweet keyboard. All right, so how do I find the single equivalent discount rate? One minus point seven one eight. Uh huh. Yep. One minus point seven one eight five three six. Again, this is a rate. It's not money, so round nothing. Leave all of the digits there. Point 
281464. It is okay to think of this as a 28.1464% discount. That's okay to think that way. But honestly, I would rather you just left it as a nice decimal rate with lots of digits. That's fine with me. Okay? And then last but not least, how are we going to get the trade discount amount? You can still do net minus list, yes, okay? Or, or <laughs> if you want, remember that this is a rate. If you're trying to get what the discount amount is, you can take the list price times the discount rate and you will get the discount amount. Either way, both of those numbers had better be the same. And in fact, I often recommend doing both of them, making sure they come out to the same, because then you didn't screw up one of the numbers, right? Wait a minute, what did you say? You can take the list minus what rate? The single? List times the single equivalent times discount rate. Times. Yes. Okay. So you could do 5,000 times 0.281464 or 5,000 minus 3592.68. Either way, you will wind up getting the same. So whatever that worked out to be, what? what? Yep. There you go. That's a seven. That's a You're swearing a lot to me. Hmm? You're swearing a lot to me. Yeah. I'm saying you swear. But I write a lot, and then I do. Yeah. All right, so this is starting to get more like a real invoice that you could potentially even run into in the real world, right? One where there's, note that the legal mumbo jumbo behind this invoice would be buried in lots and lots of text, right? Usually an invoice for this kind of a, of a purchase would have a page worth of description first, and then on the back page you'd start to actually get some numbers, right? I mean, there's, the amount of legal baloney that goes on before this happens is, is immense. The nice thing about our class is we don't have to worry about the legal bullshit. All we have to do is do the numbers. Right? When you get to your business classes, you'll have to figure out, well, how do you write all of the crap that comes before this so that it's legally valid first, and then do the numbers again for, okay, you're ready for that. All right, but not too bad. So chain discounts, all right, again, my advice, in fact, I, I tend to recommend this on a regular basis. As soon as you get to this problem on the test or any of the homeworks, write those compliments up there. And no, did we ever use the 22, the 6, or the 2? Because it's not necessary. The compliments are what you're going to use almost all the time. All right? All right, so let's see how we do it. All right, so uh, let's see. Think we're out of discounts yet? So, um, so when I so when I get this bill that says I owe three thousand five hundred ninety-two dollars and sixty-eight cents, when does my manufacturer want me to pay this bill? I don't think it's uh, yeah, don't, uh, they want their money right away, right? When do I, the retailer, want to pay this bill? as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully never, right? I mean, wouldn't it be great if you never had to pay for any of the things that you sold? Yeah, except that it wouldn't go very well. But yeah, as late as possible. You would like it even if it, you didn't have to pay until you sold all of the items that you bought, right? So that you can guarantee you can pay for it. But you know that that's not, that's not the way it works, right? And so, guess how our manufacturer tries to convince us to pay this bill Oh yeah, of course. They will always give you a discount to get your cash sooner. Why do you think that is? So they can make sure that they get paid. Yeah, so they can make sure that they get paid. They are willing to give up one or two percent of that money to get it three months sooner or even thirty days sooner. Because businesses, folks, when they fold and the manufacturer hasn't collected on a on, a, on an invoice yet. Guess how far down the list they are for getting paid? Way, 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 way down. The banks, the creditors, the government, they all come first. Real businesses that, that a business owes money to, they're always bottom of the list, folks. They get screwed the hardest. 
And so this is why businesses are trying very hard to make sure as soon as they can get your money, please, please send it to me, right? And so they, I mean, there are literally businesses that will give you a full 2% discount if you pay within the first 10 days. 2% for nothing, right? Just so they can get their money 30 days sooner. That's it. You wouldn't think 30 days is a big deal, but... <laughs> All right, so... Early payment discounts. The book likes to call these cash discounts. That, that used to make sense, but with the advent of electronic file transfers, the whole concept of cash payments has kind of gone out the door. Right? I mean, to pay people now, all you have to do is take your two phones and smash them together. It's like, oh, you pay, great, you're done. It's, there's no credit card, no interference. Yeah, it's just done, right? So early payment discounts. All right, there are three ways you can get an early payment discount. And again, these are negotiated at the beginning of your contract with your wholesaler. The standard method will look something like this, 2 slash 10, 1 slash 20, n slash, uh, doesn't, 90 isn't, 90 day negotiated terms are almost gone nowadays, folks. n slash 60 say. And these are often called the terms. All right, so the terms of the invoice are basically how you're setting up your early payment discounts, okay? And the way this reads is 2% if 10 days from invoice date. If you pay within 10 days of the invoice date, you get a 2% discount, all right? The next one gives you the next window of opportunity, right? This is a 1% discount if you pay between 11 and 20 days of the invoice date. So the 1 and the 2 are not cumulative, they're either or. If you pay in the first 10 days, you get 2%. If you don't pay in the first 10 days, that window closes. These are often called discount windows. And so in 10 days, this window will close and you can't get a 2% discount anymore. The, but this window opens, it will open for 10 more days. You'll get a 1% discount if you pay within those. And after 20 days, the net N technically stands not for no discount for net due in 60 days. And if you don't pay within 60 days, that's where all the legal mumbo jumbo comes from, right? Where you start talking about fees and penalties and what body limit gets cut off and all those other sorts of things when you don't pay your bills on time and depending on which business you're in, right? So if you're in a reputable business like selling hacks, they'll just pay you a fine. If you're in a slightly disreputable business like selling drugs, then they might come for fingers, toes, arms, whatever, right? Standard stuff, all right? So note that all of this, based off invoice date, the invoice date, folks, is the date you order the goods not the day that you get them or the day that they're shipped even, okay? It's the day you make the order. So think about this. If you get 10 days after you order something, have you ever had something shipped to you that's taken longer than 10 days? Yes. Are you as a business going to pay somebody before you've gotten your product? No. But do you want that 2% discount? No, because that way you don't get your stuff at all. Mm -hmm. But do you want that 2% discount? Okay. Have you ever paid for something before you've received it? Okay. Yes, every time you ordered anything on Amazon, you paid before you got it, folks. Yeah, but this is a bigger deal than $2 or $10, $20 ordering on Amazon. If you make in tens of billions of dollars and this order is $10,000, it's the same level. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a question, though, but it is a business question you have to decide, right? Because 2% of a particular order could be the difference between making payroll and not making payroll next month. So you might decide to pay for something before you even receive it. It's the game you have to play. 
Okay, this is why business is a little scary sometimes, right? Because you have to deal with that. Now, if you don't want to have to deal with this, that's perfectly fine. You can instead use the receipt of goods technique, which is slightly different, right? So note the difference in the way they look, all right? Receipt of goods terms, basically what it means is that exactly the same as up here, but instead of things being based off the invoice date, these 10 days are based off when you get the goods, okay? So you're gonna a 1% discount if you pay 10 days from receiving goods. And what do you notice happened to the discount? It went down. Yes. If you do not accept the reliability, you know, the liability of dealing with shipping, and you want to have this discount only when you receive the goods, your discount will always be less. Period. Okay? You won't be able to negotiate a 2% discount when you're paying without having the shipping potential snafu, right? And normally when you're doing receipt of goods, they will also tend to force you to pay sooner too, just to be snarky. Again, it's business, folks. I mean, this is what's going on. And note what differentiates the two. This is how you tell the difference between receipt of goods and standard. It's that ROG at the end. So it's the wrong terms, right? I often call it pirate terms because it's wrong, right? I mean, that's what the pirate says when he's boarding the enemy ship. <laughs> I gotta come up with something, guys. Okay, the last one, the last type of terms are called end of month terms. The only reason they're called end of month terms is because the, the acronym stands for EOM. Okay? So so bear with me. Normally, folks, when you're dealing with end of month, the discount is going to be 10 days from the end of the billing month, and then the, the actual bill is going to be due at the end of the month that you are actually paying this bill for 1% discount. Okay? So normally they're due basically right away. Right? The idea is that you are going to get a 1% discount if you pay 10 days after the last day of the invoice month. Of the invoice month. Okay, it sounds weird, okay? And again, please note that it's not if you pay by the end of the month. It's 10 days after the end of the month. Okay, what, what date will it be always 10 days after the end of the month? The 10th. The idea behind this, folks, is that big, huge retailers want to pay all of their bills on the same day and get their 1% early payment discount. If you're, say, Walmart, guess how many different wholesalers or manufacturers you have? Yeah, hundreds to potentially even thousands. Do you potentially owe 70, 80, 90 different bills on any tenth of the month? Yes. And you think Walmart will make sure that they pay all of those bills on the tenth of the month to get their 1% discount? You better down. Okay. And Walmart is actually, you know, Walmart and Target are the best ones at this, right? They actually hire people for one day every month to come in and make sure that these are all paid on time. And so if you want to, you can go work for them and say, look, I only want to work once a month. And they'll say, great, awesome. Here's the crappiest job that we can give you. <laughs> and that job is to sit down and pay bills all day for a day. All, that's all you do. You stand in a little computer and you electronic transfer files constantly. Just sit there. <laughs> Next bill. <laughs> Next bill. <laughs> that's all you do. They probably make good money, though. They probably do, yeah. But you only get one day of work. Yeah. If, if that's enough to live on, yes, it is fine. It, and the problem is whether it's enough to live on, right? 
But that's the idea, is that they're trying to force all of their bills to become due on the same date. And note that it's this number of days after the end of the billing month. Okay? Now, what started happening when, I don't know if it was Walmart or Target or one of the other departments, or one of the big, huge retail people started this type of, of billing method that there were a couple of companies that would always ship all of their goods to them on like the 29th or the 30th of the month, constantly, right? And so if you ship something on the 29th, is there a possibility that it'll get there after the 10th? Mm -hmm. Walmart didn't pay for stuff unless it was there. So if it got there after the 10th, would Walmart get their 1% discount? This happened enough times with the same manufacturers that they were using that I mean, Walmart was big enough that they could basically tell those people to screw off and go find different ones. But the small people, they couldn't do anything about it. And do you think that those manufacturers still did the same thing to the small sellers? Mm -hmm. well, of course, if you're a dick to one person, you're a dick to everybody. I mean, that's kind of how it works. So anyways, what they did is that they said, look, let's band together and make a new rule. So there's a caveat to this, folks. If the date is after the 25th, so 26, 27, 28, 29th, etc. Add an extra month to your discount. An entire extra month. But they started spending some time, didn't they? Yeah. Well, then they just didn't worry about it. I mean, Walmart was, you know, Walmart wasn't that, they were pretty good about making sure that they paid all their bills on time. But, I mean, getting an extra month for, for a small business makes, you know, make a big business. Right? I mean, again, though, so this is the new caveat to this particular rule, all right? So, if the invoice date is, uh, let's say it's um, 4.29, And I have those terms, 1 slash 10 EOM. What is the last day for 1% discount? Good. Normally you would say, hey, go to the end of April and then go 10 days after it, right? That would go to May 10th. But since the date is after the 25th, instead of it being May 10th, Add an extra month, June 10th. If this date had been 422, 510. Okay? That's what we mean by end of month. So please do not tell me that they have to pay by the end of the month to get the discount. Okay? That's just when the discount starts. And again, note that. This number is not always 10, sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's four, based on the company and where they're at. If they want to pay all their bills on the fourth of the month, they will make this one slash four. If they want to pay it on the eighth of the month, they'll make this one slash eight. So this number for EOM is really the date that the business wants to pay all their bills by, okay? Usually it is the 10th, just because that's kind of how business works, but I don't want to say that, but I know that it's been changed at least a couple of times in my experience. All right? So these three types of methods are also available to you. Now, what it means, though, is that when I create a problem, I have to give you two more pieces of information. I will always be giving you the invoice date and the date that you receive your goods. It is your job to make sure that you use the correct one of those two, okay, when you go to calculate stuff. All right? So please note. These are the terms, the only terms, that use the day that you receive the invoice. The standard and the EOM are both based off the invoice date, not the receipt date. Okay? What I tend to tell students is, when you get the dates, cross out the one you shouldn't be using. Then you'll be safe. Alright, All right, so, are we ready to try one of these? Okay. So this is this is the coup de grace of well almost we're, we're almost there all right so let's suppose I order ten thousand dollars make the number nice and easy ten thousand dollars of good stuff which 
to slightly different and stuff. Because it's good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's suppose that I get a, uh, let's keep it simple, a 20 slash 8 slash 5 discount. And have terms of, let's do standard terms first. 2 slash 10, 1 slash 20, n slash 60. Okay? Again, I will cut down the invoice so that basically the pertinent information you need to work with is all you're going to get. Okay? Which is very nice of me, by the way. Because I could pull out a real invoice and send it to you, and you'd be like, what the is going on? Because it'd be all over the place. I'm not going to do that. Okay? All right, so for this problem, folks, tell me what is my list price? Oh, I have to give you dates. Sorry. So let's suppose that the invoice date is, let's keep it relatively simple. Let's suppose that it was um, 5, 10, 18. So it was earlier in May this month, this year. And that we receive our goods on 5, 25, 18. So 15 days from the get there. Crappy ship, probably his brother. <laughs> All right, so for this one, folks, all I want is list net and then how much do I pay on uh, June 1st? Uh, yeah, that's, well, let's get some discount. How about that? How about we pay 526? It's a little better. All right, so, again, in theory, folks, I could ask everything if I wanted to, right? I could ask list, net price equivalent, net price, single equivalent, discount amount, all that kind of crap. But I'm just cutting it down, tearing it down a little bit for this problem so that we don't run out of time. All right, so what's my list price? 10,000. 10, Take your free points when you get them. Now, no, I didn't ask for the net price equivalent, so how can you jump to the net price right away? Not absolutely right away, so it takes some work. So what am I going to do up there on my <coughs> discount numbers? Yes. So 80-92-95. 80-92-95. Uh -huh. And you can just take that number and times it by 10,000. So all you really have to do, folks, is just go ahead and do the whole thing in one fell swoop. 10,000 times 0.8, and if you want to write the zero, you can, times 0.92 times 0.95. You can just do it. It's perfectly okay. If you want to, you can multiply these three first and get the net price equivalent rate, and that's okay. But it's another step that I didn't ask for. So, what did we wind up having? 6992. Six, not 6992. Mm -hmm. So, in theory, this is how much I owe if I pay at the very end of the billing cycle, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm paying on May 26th. What kind of a discount do I get on May 26th? 1%. Why 1%? What's the important date? No, the only time you use the receipt of goods date is if you see that little three-letter three acronym, R-O-G. Right? If there's no pirates, you don't use the receipt of, receipt of goods date. Right? So, how many days is it from the 10th to the 26th? 16, 16 days, the 2% window has closed. We are only getting a 1% discount. We get a 1% discount. On that $6,992 bill. How are we going to figure out how much we owe? 
Multiply by what, Rick? 0 0.99. Why 0 0.99? Yeah, if you're getting a 1% discount, how much of it are you actually paying for? Yeah, uh-huh. You're paying for 99% of it. Keep using that complement concept, folks. It's not wrong to take 1% and subtract. It's okay. It's just slower, right? It's okay. It's not wrong, okay? I'm just, I'm I'm just trying to give you, as, give you as much help as I can to go faster. Thank right. you. Thank you for saying it's okay. <laughs> So this, what does our final statement work, work out to be when we send them their money? 6922, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 68, 6. Not bad? All right, so imagine, if you will, folks, I am the bill payer for my company, okay? And so I go to my accounts payable doc, you know, computer, and I'm going to transfer this much money from, from our account to my manufacturer's account. I get onto the account, and I, and first thing you get, of course, is the amount of money sitting in the account, right? What happens if I hop on the account instead of having, say, like fifty thousand dollars in the account? I've only got five thousand dollars in the account. What the hell did you do? Wasn't me. I'm just the person who pushes the buttons. Somebody else puts the money in the account, right? So the problem with it is that the president or the vice president or, or you know, the C. FO, right, that would be the chief financial officer who should be transferring money back and forth, has not done their job very well. It's like, shame on you. So what do I do if I can only pay $5,000? What do I do? Now, according to the rules, any amount you pay gets a discount, period. All right? Unless the, the, the wholesaler has, has put an extra contract an extra clause in the contract that says discount only on full payment. Any payment amount you make is discount. Okay? So, what happens if I only pay $5,000? And again, it's not my fault, but that's all the money I can give them. And they tell me, right, that, that I have to pay it now, otherwise we don't get the discount. So I'm like, oh, well, shit, I better pay as much as I can and, and get some discount. So the question is, how much is left on the bill after I pay that $5,000? So here's the tricky part, folks, right? Is that, no, remember, this is the amount we owe only if we pay all of it, right? Mm -hmm. Technically, what do we owe? 69.92. We technically owe 69.92. So a better answer would be to take 69.92 and subtract 5,000, but we gotta get that 1% discount in there, okay? And here's the tricky part. When you discount a payment, Things are a little bit different, okay? If you discount a charge, it's obvious. You take 1% and subtract, right? And so what we often think is, well, you should just take 1% and add if you're discounting a payment. Nope, not how it works, okay? The way it works is that when you get a 1% discount on a payment, they're basically telling you that every 99 cents you pay, subtract $1 from the bill, okay? Because that's what a 1% discount means on a payment. That 99 cents equals a dollar. So what you need to do is to tell me, in this $5,000 payment, how many 99 cent piles are there? In other words, how would you divide $5,000 into 99 cent piles? Fifty, fifty point fifty, and then the other number after the. Uh huh. And the last one is a one because the next number after the zero is going to be a five, and since it's money, we round it up to fifty, fifty, fifty one. And note, folks, this is more than just one percent of five thousand, right? One percent of five thousand dollars is straight fifty. 
we get this extra 51 cents due to the division, and that's what you deserve, okay? So by dividing by the complement of our discount, you will get the correct amount. This is how much our payment is worth. How much payment is worth. So how much do I owe then? Subtract from? Yeah, make sure you go back to the 69.92. Remember, this number was only if we paid in full. Since we're not paying in full, that number is worth absolutely nothing, right? 69, 92, 50, 50, 51, what did you say the number was? 1941.49. 1941.49. That's technically how much we owe after that minor snafu on 526. All right? Now, let's suppose that two days later, the CFO comes back from the Cayman Islands, because that's where he was. Yeah, of course, right? I mean, he was buying one of the islands, right? So, you know, that's the way business works. Uh, and all of a sudden, he's like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. I didn't put the money in there for you. <laughs> and so then he transfers the money in. Now you have to pay. Pay off this bill on 528 after Dork fills the account, right? How much should I pay? I'm paying it in full this time. That would be a full percent. Okay. Since we're still inside the 20 days, folks, the 1% window is still open. Okay? Doesn't matter how many times you pay in a given window, you will always get that discount for those entire days. So even though this is a new payment, it's still within 20 days of the invoice date. Therefore, we're still getting a 1% discount. So to figure out how much we owe, times by 0.99. 1941.49 times 0 0.99. 1922.08. And nicely enough, folks, what do you notice? $5,000 plus $1,922.08. What does that equal? 69.22.08. If we'd have just paid it all in one fell swoop, we could have paid this, but we had to pay it in installments because my boss was a dope, right? Life happens, all right? So anyways, please note that this concept of paying, this is what's known as a partial payment, okay? When you're paying but not paying in full, it's a partial payment, and you divide by the complement when you make a partial payment. Okay? There's a couple of homework problems on there that do partial payments, so you should definitely be doing at least one, if not two, divide by the complements to figure out how much a partial payment is worth. Okay? So, for next time, chapter seven, please get started on that homework. Not as many problems, I don't think, doesn't no, it? No, there's not. Half as many. True. Does it like only go up to 48 or something yeah. like that? Uh, 92. Well, that was the chapter six ones. That was that the was beat you over the head with percentages, right? You got these, you'll have these in within what? A couple hours? These jumps? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do them right now. Well, oh, just making sure uh -huh. we, we did not, so. I try very